So hello again, this is Toby from Toby's Urban Sketch and today we're going to be doing another little watercolour demonstration. Um, this time it's of a church called St Mary the Virgin Church. This is in Hughtown, the Isles of Scilly, which is where I was at for a recent holiday. And at the moment, or for the next few weeks, I'll be putting up lots of Instagram challenges from the Isles of Scilly. There's loads of stunning photos there. Um, so if you want to check out my Instagram account and follow those, you can find it in the description below. Um, as ever, if you do like and subscribe to my YouTube channel, it's a huge help. So if you feel like doing it, please do. And so more about what we're doing today. So we're trying a couple of new things. So I've actually got, this is A4. Um, and it's artboard, so you can see it's quite thick, and it's effectively watercolour paper, um, I think mounted onto some thin board. It's supposed to be a bit more resilient to um, more water, because it's more difficult for it to buckle. And also if you want to scratch out areas of white, things like that, we may do that today, may not, I'm not sure. Um, but it's my first time trying it, so let's see what happens. Um, but otherwise it's going to be fairly similar to what I normally do, nice and loose. We are going to start with a pencil drawing, which I don't often do. Uh, just because I want to get some really loose pen work to start with. But still have a good framework that I'm working towards. So I'm just starting by mapping in some of these shapes. This church is sort of a series of overlapping squares. And then down the side, it's got these little um, sort of pillars almost. Just gotta make sure we line things up properly. Like I said, this is gonna be quite so loose and work today is what I'm aiming for, with more shape coming from the actual watercolours. There's a tree in here, and I, I may not even pen the tree in at all to start with. We'll see, maybe a couple of marks, and just see what we can do with more sort of painterly marks with our, with our actual watercolours. And with that in mind, I'm just trying to get big shapes in here with the pencil, nothing clever. There's a little something sticking out here. And a similar set of overlapping shapes coming down the side of this bit of the church. And these quite magnificent windows. The doors coming in about here. This is where you get a sense of the scale of the building because it's a big door, but it's not big in the sort of scheme of this. We get a wall coming in like this. Another one going across, a little bit higher actually. It's the advantage of pencil is you can just go for it. And even though I always say just go for it with pen, with pencil it really doesn't matter. As long as you're sketching nice and light. Of course, if you start sketching hard, you might have some marks you can't get rid of. So just adding in some lines here to make it make sense, make the perspective make sense. There's some sort of greenery over here as well. And here, a couple of shapes going off to the side, and a bit of greenery. A little house here. And a flank. Oh, 
I think that's all we need to do for the pencil work. Actually just to add in the curve so I understand again. It's all about just contextualising what you're doing so that you have, have an understanding of where the colour needs to go. That was all just done with a 4B pencil if you're interested. I often use a mechanical pencil but I just didn't have it to hand today. Just going to start off with a Winsor Newton 0.3 mil pen. Actually, I'll say that. I'm going to start off with a Winsor Newton 0.1 mil pen, which is a very fine pen. The the Winsor Newton fine liners tend to be a bit thinner than other brands I've found. And we're just going to get in these sort of sketchy loose marks. Not everything I've penciled in is going to get drawn here. I'll run out some of the pencil marks, but I'll leave some of them as guides for the colouring. You see just how I'm making these really wiry marks. Things like windows, we just mark a border of. This clock can be a little more defined. So in the actual image, it's an octagon, I think. And we just pop in some lines here. And what we can do at the end, if we feel more line work is needed, we can always come back. But we can't take away obviously. With with line work you can't you can't go back and reduce it. So you're better to do less than you think you need. Assuming you're happy to go back in at the end. Okay, just not even gonna do a whole of all of those. A couple of windows I've missed here. That in some of the base, but again there's trees coming in the bottom. Another little window. And just popping in the outline of this line. I'm not sure if that was the right decision. It might make painting a bit more difficult than it needed to be. Whereas if we just added it on top after, but we'll see. So that will do, oh, he says. There's always something more to do. But that will do for now. I'm just going to gently go in with a putty eraser and just dab. So the advantage of a putty eraser, you don't have to rub. Rubbing will remove everything. Dabbing like this will just lighten all of these lines. Easy then to cover with watercolour, but also they're still providing a guide and also they're going to realistically be providing quite a bit of shape underneath the watercolour. Okay, so we're already ready to go to the watercolour with this. I'm going to start with the sky. The sky in this is very blue in the photo. And I think I'm going to pre wet a little bit, but not a huge amount, with a very blue sky, something like cobalt. It's always a nice colour. And I'm just going to lift this to let, it, let things run around. And I don't mind at all. I'm going to paint around things to some extent, but I don't mind at all if the paint decides to go into the buildings or whatever because we're going to do a few layers so it's just going to add well nothing really more than a bit of nice contrast or nice texture in the buildings if the things do run just a little bit of variation so that was cobalt just add a little bit of um, a cerulean in as well. I'll move my 
All right, well, you can see it. I'm going to move my water bottle out of the way. So this is a cerulean chromium, which is a quite cool blue. And that should add just a bit more texture in there. Next we'll go in with the brick colours. So I've got a raw sienna here, which would be my starting point. I'm just going to have a little bit of this Hamza yellow. I'm being really watery. I'm just going to start with the raw sienna on its own. And that looks okay. Now with watercolour, one of the things you're trying to do is make sure there's plenty of you know, variation in a given wash. And that's why I've got a little bit of my Hansi yellow there. Because then you can just pick up little bits of the yellow, drop it in, or maybe even if we take just the yellow, do a little area where we're just doing that yellow to, to get a bit where there's more light. And then come back in with more of a mix again. And just bring it down to a sort of rough edge where this tree's going to come in. It's nice in, in washes like this to not paint everything. So we've got little gaps everywhere. Certainly I'm leaving the windows as gaps. And just leaving those areas of, of white does give a really nice variation at the end. And again, just painting around the windows, varying the wash bit more intensity in places, a bit of yellow in other places. This is the first wash, remember, as well. So this, we're painting the light. We might end up painting over a huge amount of this, which is fine. It's still adding something, still adding layers. But what we don't want to do is make it too dark. Because when it's too dark, you can't can't get back from that in watercolour. Again, we're going to have greenery coming in here, so we're just painting down to sort of a loose edge, leaving plenty of white gaps. All right, I think that's looking okay. So now we want to do our sort of shadowed bit. We don't need to worry about strictly doing the shadow yet. But I am going to darken my the colours I've been using. That's a really nice shadow colour. Is a mix of ultramarine and burnt sienna. And if we just mix that with our raw sienna, we'll have just essentially darkened the raw sienna. And I don't mind if some of this blue comes in either. Okay, and that sort of unifies everything quite nicely, I think. What I'm going to do while it's still done, just mix up a bit more of our dark colour, make it a little bit more intense. I'm still, I should have said, by the way, this is a size 2 uh, mop, which is quite good for both doing little lines, but also it carries a lot of pigment. So it's somewhere between a details brush and a and, and just a proper mop. Just dropping in some of this dark while things are wet, while it can sort of diffuse around into areas which are going to have a bit of shadow or that kind of thing going on. And again, it doesn't have to be continuous lines. We're hoping this just moves around. We can start to add a little bit into these windows and there 
everything just gradually, gradually, gradually takes a little bit of shape. And the door's actually probably a sort of sienna type colour, so we just paint that in. This is what I said about the um, the lights might get a little bit annoying because I put it in already. And we just get a bit more sienna coming around the door. A bit too dark, so with some water, we can just blend that out. Now with a little dry brush, I'm just going to pick up some of these drips, which will also soften these edges up. It's a little bit late to soften the edges in places, which is fine. There we go. Now, I'm going to keep that to one side as a relatively clean brush. Now it's time to move into our trees just to bring that shape on both sides. I've got a, a colour here by Daniel Smith, which is a green gold, which is one I really like actually. It was introduced to me by someone who asked me to do a commission. They said they loved the colour. I said I only have quinacridone gold, but I ended up buying it and it's now always in my palette. And how are we going to get these, these trees in? So, a nice way of doing trees is just with a big brush, just coming out of the direction you expect the foliage to be. You do this with a sword liner as well, and just creating uneven shapes. And when you get a bit deeper, these just use the side of your brush again, just to make those uneven shapes. Now the tree is a really dark green, so this green's going to get darker. But again, this is this is the light in our image. This isn't supposed to be a full-fledged colour. Just need a little bit of patience as we do it. And then things will eventually take shape. Okay. So I'm going to go straight back in. I just move a bit more of this green gold around. Just let it do its thing. And for a bit of um, extra variety, it's a bit too vivid. So what I've mixed there is a little bit of viridian and fallow, and it's come out very vivid. Now, burnt sienna is a great way of toning down any green. If you see that, instantly it's become a much more realistic green. Just want to get some darker colours in there while it's wet. We'll see what that does, especially in these bits of green, which are not going to be catching the light as much. Okay. And just get most of that pigment off the brush. And I'm going to go back to our Sienna, taking a little bit of care, don't want too much rundown, actually, saying that, we'll get our clean dry brush again, we can come in and pick up lots of these. I'll grab one of my tissues so I can clean it properly. Okay. 
bit more of us, you know. Still wet, which is good. You can just get that in. Don't mind it collecting a bit of that green. I'm going to do it in a couple of places. That's fine. I'm actually bringing this all the way across, I think. And then I think if we just find a bit of our dark again, we can just drop that in on the stairs where there's, where there's a bit of shadow. There, that's a bit of shadow. And also, if I pop this flat again so it doesn't run too much, our pavement can take shape. It's going to vary the colour a little bit for the road as well. Get a few directional marks in there. A tiny bit more blue just to bring that pavement back. Okay, so that is essentially layer one done. Now, because it's very loose and watery, the pigment will dry quite quickly. But I'm going to give it a few minutes so that we can really get going with the next layer without too much running around. And here we are. So it's nice and dry now. You can run a handle over it, no problems. And what we can sort of see is we've got like the shadow of a church here, haven't we? But it looks very light. It's lots of light bursting forward from it. And um, I'm not going to touch the sky anymore. I think there's plenty of colour there. Um, if you were doing sort of complex clouds or wanting a really intense sky or something like that then absolutely we could go back in and maybe we'll do some blue splashes or something at the end. But I think, broadly speaking, this, this is enough. But what we will do is definitely bring out some details or some just points of interest in the church as our next layer. Darken a few things, let it dry, and then we'll move on to the shadows. So we're going to stick with the colours we were using. But this time, instead of it being like super watery, it's just going to be quite watery. So you can see here we've got our um, hands of yellow and our uh, raw sienna. I'm actually going to add a corner of quinacridone here as well. The quinacridone gold is a sort of similar feeling to me as the green gold. So I think we're safe to use it even though it's not in our first layer. And let's see what happens with this just more intense pigment. And we'll just have a look at where we can bring out a few lines and shapes. So we're not just looking at where we've, where we've actually drawn in this time. Because what we're trying to do is leave patches of white which represent certain shapes. And just again just keep that variation going. We want clear areas of of shadow. And the same principle as ever is you know just be just be uh, sort of cautious because we can't take away at this stage. We've got this lovely light layer on which already looks Quite fun. If we completely cover it, it's covered. It's gone. If we just move around, gently marking out little shapes and things, we should we should leave enough interest there. And when you've made a little mistake like I have here, you can just go in with a dry brush because it's nice and watery, it will lift up really easily and take away some of the water from my brush to make the next bit a bit more manageable. And this is a bit of raw sienna mixed with the quinacridone. I'm trying to create a 
change the width of hand to yellow there. I'm trying to create variation between the faces so that we can see, even though there's not going to be a shadow between here and here, we can see that they're, they're different. I can leave this little line of white as well to help with that. We just want it to be really like immediately obvious that we got different different um, things. But it doesn't have to be completely separated because it isn't in the actual reference. You can see that at times it's not clear that there is two sides. So we can join bits up like that as long as we leave something to differentiate what's going on. I'm just going to come in around and drop some more yellow and things in there. Fill in some of this space with the tree. Okay. I'm just bringing these lines up to where we put the shadow in. And just where that bit of light is in the reference, I'm just bringing across some of our colours that we're using. They may get covered up by the dark, but they may not, so we'll see. And then we're repeating the process, exactly the same process here. And these sort of big strokes with the side of the brush naturally give you a varied, interesting bit of line work, uh, line work, watercolour. Just by constantly varying the pigment very slightly, moving between the colours we're using, moving between how much we've mixed them you'll get a really interesting surface. I can see something that's important to do as well is not get too sucked in. So I can look at this and get a bit like, oh, that's not, it doesn't look amazing, it's not perfect, it's not whatever. But when I step back or take a photo or because I'm filming it, I can look up at the camera. Actually, I, it looks so much better when you're not zoned in, just looking at one tiny area. You can you can actually be really very pleased with what you're doing. When looking really closely, you're just focusing too much on one detailed area, which actually these little breaks, they might look rubbish if you're looking close and thinking, why isn't it smooth? When you stand back, they're what giving you the interest. Can I get bit more of this pigment as well. This is a mix of all the colours by now. And just get the top in of this building. Again, just being careful to leave a little bit of our light colour. Just got to mirror this same intensity up here. I didn't do it there as well, but I think that's going to get covered up. And down this doorway. And we'll just start to give the impression of some stairs. And what are stairs? They're a series of horizontal lines of one colour, followed by horizontal lines of another colour. They're really not complicated. Now I'm going to just experiment here. And instead of doing the tree and then the, the wall, we're going to get the wall in first and let things dry and we'll do the, the tree while we're doing our shadows. That will potentially let me overpaint the wall a little bit. We'll see. Still using these same colours and just you know varying them a little bit here and there. Smooth strokes. I'm actually going to so one thing I'm not liking is that the the wall is exactly the same as as the church. I think you know the wall isn't what we're interested in. The church is what we're interested in, obviously. We didn't come along and go, that's a nice wall. So I'm just some of that dark we were mixing before, or the um, ultramarine and burnt sienna. Just going to put it in there. And this is a bit of a risky thing to do. 
because going back in on a wash can give you cauliflowers or odd textures but I really did feel it was just too in my face, too intense so I wanted to do something different to it now, a bit more of that dark but mostly going to make it a bit more sort of blue and that's going to come across as our pavement Again, it doesn't matter that these bits are running in, we'll, we just catch the areas to get them to run in even. And just change the colour again, you can get the edge of the pavement in. And just the fact that it's a different colour immediately shows your eye that there's something different going on. And then if we change it again, we're going to get a bit of our sienna in. More of that blue. There we go. We've got another colour coming in on the road. Don't have to paint the whole road at all. I'm just going to come in with water and break that shape up a bit. Decrease the intensity a little bit. And what we can do as well with a corner of an object. So um, I'm just using the corner of an eraser here, an eraser, <laughs> a sharpener. You can you can bring out some lines while this paint's still wet, and that gets you a bit of geometric feel of you know road versus natural building. We can do it in the building as well. Not quite wet enough, but we can do that when the shadows are there in the building. Perhaps we can do it to bring out the line here or the line here, something like that. Okay, so that's stage two. Let's let that one dry as well and then come back and add some shadows. Hello and we are back. So this is again nice and dry. Got these little texture lines up. I, I sketched in with the um, <laughs> with the sharpener, and um, you can see they sort of stick around after. They're an interesting way of playing with watercolor in a different manner. And what what have we actually got left to do now? Well, essentially, it's adding our darkest darks and our, our most intense pigments. Um, I'm going to move to a couple of thinner brushes. So this is. And this is the way that mops brilliantly work. This is also a size 2 mop, um, as is this. So you can see they are vastly different sizes. So whenever you're buying a mop, it's really important to either buy one from a brand you know, or to just go to the shop and, and get exactly the size you want. I'm also going to use a very small brush, potentially a size <laughs> another size 2 um, round brush this time. Run brushes are far more predictable in size. Um, we're going to start with this, this mop though. What we're going to do is get some much darker pigment here. This is the ultramarine and burnt sienna, and it creates a nice neutral, well, a relatively neutral uh, shadow colour. And what you can do is you paint, you vary the blue, you vary the, the burnt sienna. Um, and you end up with a really nice, interesting mix. We're going to go in in this big area first. And we're just bringing this shadow to all of this area. But again, just leaving those highlights. Bringing it down so there's a little bit of highlight there. Let's see if we can leave that highlight. I've already varied it so we got a more brown and a more blue shadow. And with shadow we need to just linking things up. It helps create a lot of shape. Having these discontinuous lines as well stops it being too contrived, too like just drawing. And where else 
also we got a little bit of shadow. So now we've done this big area. We can see it's not too intense, it's great. And now we know we can just sort of start moving around, looking for all the little areas of shadow, things which give it the shape it's got. And adding them in. Windows here. So I had this lighter area, if you can see. We want to keep that, so just put the shadow of the window just to the right of that. And then, done this in the wrong way. So I'm going to have to paint with my hand in all sorts of odd angles. I'm just trying to create little lines which add shape, add detail, suggestions of detail more than definite detail. Now if I was doing this live, you'd be able to tell me when I put my hand in something I shouldn't have, but I'm waiting for the moment that my hand splodges in there or something. So all these little marks just give us these extra little shapes. Show us where the shadows are. Again, let's just change it so we don't have too much of the same exact shadow around. You can use the, the sort of shadow colour as well to add details in. And here we're trying to show the shadow without getting rid of the light or getting rid of these sort of more neutral areas. I'm going to get some really thick pigment here just to go alongside here. Okay. And then let's get our door back in. This is where again I say I might regret putting this light in. I'm not normally someone who enjoys really careful painting. I enjoy sort of just being given a free reign to enjoy myself. So painting around things, that will do. Um, Sort of fills me with a little bit of dread sometimes. Okay, so what else can we add in? I think we can come in here a bit. So we've also got the windows and we've got these things which aren't windows, but they do have a mix of colours in them. So there's some more raw sienna. Because what you've got is little lines across. And in between those lines is the dark. So if I just move this round so my hand can do it more easily, we can get these in. And again, it doesn't matter that they're going to join together a bit. And there's also a bit of shadow sides and at the top. Okay, and above we've got these little areas as well. And this is where we were careful to leave a little gap. So we could show there's a, a gap there, a line there even, sorry. Okay. I'm going to do the same in these windows, just get these shadows in approximately. But to show that they're windows, I also want a little bit of our sky colour in there. So we just drop some discontinuous areas in. Then we come back in, perhaps with a 
bit more of a bluey shadow. We can put that in the bottom. And we've definitely got windows. Now while we're playing with the blue, the clock has a blue face. So we'll just pop mostly blue in. But it's also got yellow numbers, so we'll see if we can well, some gold numbers, sorry. We'll see if we can add some gold in in a little bit. What else can we do? So we want the shadow at the bottom of here. Not a very obvious shadow. It's, in fact, it may not even be a shadow. I think it's just a sort of growth you get at the bottom of walls and things. And just a few little lines, just, you know, we know pavements have lines and having that proved to our eyes can be quite nice. Now, we've left the tree, so let's see what we can do, let's see what kind of pigments make sense here. I'm going to use this Windsor Green, which is the same one we used earlier. I've got some gold green out. And I'm going to have a little bit of burnt sienna there. And maybe a little bit of ultramarine as well. I like having my colours sort of all around so I can just move around them. And we're going to repeat the process we did before. And just, again, we pick up colours, we vary them a little bit, moving towards the sort of darker areas I'm going to put more of the dark colours in and make it a bit more continuous but we still want some of this underpainting coming through definitely. And we're, you know, naturally we're not going to see as much light when it's got the church behind it. Here we're looking into sort of open sky, but back here we're not, we're looking back at the church, so there's not as much light coming through, so the colours are going to get darker and darker as we get there. I'm going to drop a little bit of dark in some places. And you can use the dark to just create branches, break up a few shapes, put some drops in there. We'll let it dry a bit more before we go back and we can do a few more lines. In fact this might be another area where we can use our, our sharp edge and just Drag some pigment around, create some lines. We'll see how that looks when it's dry. So all I've done is spread a few bits around. And I'm just varying things, trying to Get rid of some of the white spaces which don't necessarily make total sense. So the white below there, for example, between the bushes and the, um, and the wall. And this time just dabbing to create variants in pigment. And then this, this guy at the back much more of a um, well, background, not, not part of the focal area, so just make it really dark green. Just leaving this gap to show that there's, a, there's like a fence coming through. If I 
I'm making it completely different green. It also drops it out of the um, out of merging with this one. And I'm going to use some of this dark green just to see what happens with a few more lines. We're a bit just trying to decide if we're too damp still. So we don't want to, we want them to diffuse out a little bit, but not too far. Yeah, I think they're okay. And we can come in while well, it's still a little bit damp. This darkness will just move around a bit. So, is there anything else we can do? Is there anything else we need to do? I'm going to square off this light. Bit too late to do that. That'll do. Since I've made the, the um, that's probably a bit of a mistake, which is fine. But since I've made that look a bit varied, I'm going to just make it look even more varied so that we know I did it on purpose. Okay. I'm just going to spot a few areas we can darken. So, these shadows can get darker. Then these shadows here can also come out a bit. And I can just shape the edge of these ledges. I'm just adding tiny touches now, and at some point I'll do too much, so I do need to stop soon. We can add some colour to our flag, that seems like a sensible thing to do. Red. The reality of it is it's red. Now, well, it was sort of purple, not purple. <laughs> My words are failing me. Orange. There's an orange. It's a long way from purple. Let's just try and see what happens. I think it's okay. So one thing I was worried about is if we just have red in one place, it can really draw the eye, stand out too much. Um, But I think it's okay, I think it's okay. What we might do is splash a bit of red elsewhere and if, if when it dries it looks a bit too obvious. There we go, put my finger in something I shouldn't have. Just adding time, a bit more detail in places. And I haven't finished with this light yet. All right, but I think, actually, while we're still wet, we'll do the, the little splashes which can bring things alive a bit. So we will get some in the sky here. So that was just some cobalt. Then we'll get our gold green mixed with a little bit of Windsor. Especially around trees, it can be a rather effective way of simulating this foliage there. Because we've got a nice road, I think just adding a suggestion of a, a yellow line often helps you understand what's going on. I'm going to, it's looking a bit vivid, so I'm going to just touch in some of our raw sienna. I'm going to warm up this pavement a bit as well. That's just the raw sienna. And then come in with our dark and just get some of that variation back. 
There was just something not quite looking right about it to me. I think it's better now. Okay, and then more texture to the pavement. And then just in here in a few places, I think, just a few little drops of brown. Okay, so we're going to let that one dry again. And we'll be coming back in with a pen to finish it off. Okay, so I said the next thing's the pen, but actually there's a couple of nice things we can just do with our, our really fine brush as well. So we can just add in touches of really sort of nice colour, places we feel it, it might add. So for example, underneath these um, windows, folding up our, our lines here. This is all just with the hands of yellow. And again, just adding these suggestions of something going on in the clock. And on our little ledges, which currently don't have a huge amount of, of shape without just a little bit of colour brighten them up, you can also use it to re-emphasise some of these areas where we want to make sure that people are aware that this is different to this. This is forward, it's not a shadow of the way the light's falling but it's still forward. So we can do the same down here. And these are just tiny little touches. Very difficult for someone like myself to do with anything but a small brush. So we've got a, a cross up here as well. I'm going to do it twice, once with that dark colour and then once alongside and above, just adding some different colours and then maybe even just add some really dark touches in. Then just going to take out a bit of neutral tint this stupid light <laughs> but there we go eventually i think we've got it and we can use even more of this around the place just to bring out other lines if we want don't want to do too much because we're going to do some pen work which i think let's move on to now before i go too far so now I am going to use my point three, and we're just going to come back in. Now this is something if you wanted to avoid using more pen, you could you could have just kept going with the um, with the fine brush, but equally using a, a fine line is just another way. And a bit of a quicker and easier way, I think, of bringing out these kind of details. And again, we don't want to go too far. We just want to make sure that there's enough suggestions of detail in there. And we can just get some of these sort of lines in the window. We're certainly not drawing around everything, um, which is a perfectly acceptable way of, of doing it if you want. But for this looser, this is a sort of hybrid style, I guess, somewhere between a, a illustrative line and wash and a, a watercolour. And the pen's a sort of shortcut into 
all those lines you might introduce with, uh, with a, a fine brush. You know, these places where we're just trying to prove that there is a difference. We can add lines. And just keep moving around so that you you can't ever be accused of having overdone it in one area. Just add in some squiggles for the clock. And you're kind of focusing on areas where it's lacking contrast, so there isn't a lot of contrast between here and here. By adding in a line, suddenly we, we bring forward the, the difference, the fact that we've got the sky and the, the building, and the building is a sort of hard object. We can bring out these funny shapes again. But still loads of it doesn't have ink, and that, that is, well, not just fine, it's what we're aiming for today. And here we can get these shapes back. We can just re-emphasize some of those sort of textural marks we made. Perhaps add in a few for our, our stairs. I guess get that door really there a bit more. These kind of lines help us understand the perspective of what's going on, which is why I like adding them. All right. Oh, there's always something else, isn't there? There's always something else. So these guys, I think, can just bring forward, and there's like a little aerial, probably a lightning conductor coming up there as well. We're just adding in these lines. I say lines, they're nothing more than glorified squiggles. Just again, it's like, oh, look at this detail. Okay. Always stop before you've gone too far. <laughs> Anyway, I think that's that's me done on this one. So I'll just bring it forward for you. You can see lovely vivid colours, some line work, lots of the shape is actually just through sort of slightly more careful watercolour application. Then we can go back in again and reintroduce just a few careful bits of line work. And we get quite a fun bright image of this church and I guess um, I should probably mention it was quite fun actually drawing on this artboard it hasn't warped at all you can see it's completely flat um, it's supposed to be cold pressed it's quite a smooth cold press but it has given some nice um, textures especially you can see in these shadows where the um, Burnt Sienna and French Ultramarina, which are granulating colours, they have settled in some of the texture. You can see it in the in the greenery as well a bit. So yeah, I would I'd recommend it as something to try out. I've got another nine sheets, so I'll let you know what my experiences are like at the end. Thank you for watching this this little demo. Um, please do like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And feel free to contact me here on Instagram if you've got any questions. Um, if you enjoy this style, please let me know as well, because I'd love to do more of what people are actually enjoying. Have a good rest of your days.